I think when it comes to choices, then the different aspects can choose to to make that decision uh, for you. And so your ego can make a decision, or high and grace can make a decision, or will, sheer will, chaos. I, I'm not quite sure on those aspects. They can make a decision, your mind can, your body can. So at any given point, any of your aspects uh, and your spiritual side can, morality, any of these aspects can uh, make a choice for you at any given moment. And so which one do you listen to? When it comes to... When it comes to me scrutinizing and observing myself in my current state, in my current circumstance in life, and if I reflect on lots of different areas within my life, and I go, oh, I'm grateful for this, and I'm happy about this, and I'm really proud of myself about that, and I'm working on that, and I've neglected that, and, and I'm happy to do, wait, 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 go back. You've neglected what? And you go, oh, I've neglected this area of myself. It's, it's not that big a deal. This area of my life. And, and I would say, well, no. I mean, if you've neglected an area, then there is definitely a negative emotion there as opposed to a positive one. You mentioned that you are proud of different aspects and very happy and content of different aspects, different different uh, areas of your life but if you've neglected something out with it let's hear it talk about it so talking about it in, in the privacy of my own voice notes my own diary entries if I'm not able to afford a therapist and I don't have that I mean, I need to form a deep relationship with myself first before I can communicate any of this to anyone else, right? Surely. So, especially if I'm delving into separating myself into these, like, different aspects aforementioned. And if I'm now watching my mind and I'm watching my ego and I'm watching myself when I'm attuned to high and I'm listening to my body and I'm feeling everything and I'm enjoying lots of different aspects of myself. And it's coinciding with this inward journey um, in a comprehensive manner because I'm looking into myself and becoming much more deeply self-reflective and self-introspective. And I want to heal. I want to admit on areas that I've neglected. And truths that are right now. And my... <clears throat> one of my truths is that I'm just not being a man. In a lot of ways, I'm just not being a man. I've neglected that side of myself to be mature, to make mature decisions and to stick with them and to commit to them because I know that it's overall for my future and for my well-being. It's not good to have too much of anything, everything in moderation. That should be burned into the back of everyone's minds. Everyone, everything in moderation. And so, with regard to this, I have the need to moderate myself because no one else around me even knows about it. I am becoming more aware about myself every day. And acknowledging truths is part of this journey that I'm on and having the bravery to admit it and at least 
verbalize it, get it out there, formulate it as a thought, connect to it as a feeling, and put words to it, put labels to it, identify it, become more aware of different things in my life, whether they're uncomfortable or whether they're of gratitude and love and insight, whatever it is. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm not happy with the way that I've made my life become. I have been too self-indulgent. And I have the ability and the capacity to, to achieve many great things. But I think really what's holding me back is me and my choices. It, it, it might be as simple as that. It might be as simple as, oh, I simply haven't acknowledged that I'm just being very immature a lot of the time. I'm being very self-indulgent and I lack self-control and I lack self-discipline. And so if I practiced and strengthened those areas, just like with the studies of young children, they, they realized that the children who had grown up with self-discipline are just like unfathomably much more likely to succeed and to become very um, productive. And I don't think I'm in that category at all. I think I am in some regards, some niche, niche uh, parts, in that I'm highly technical and I'm very... Um, observant and I'm a very quick learner so anything that I apply my hand to I tend to pick up very quickly and it's almost well it is a gift it's a it's a gift to be very sharp right but I don't use it to my long game health it, it's it kind of comes quite easily and I quickly switch off from committing to anything for anyone else because I just want to commit to myself and if I'm not gaining value from sticking to a particular path um, for too long then I'll jump to another path and I'll try that out and and I am referring to passions of photography and dance and now vaping um, Anything to do with technology, I'm in. I'm obsessing over. So that is one way that I'm able to have a creative outlet. But the thing is, having a creative outlet in life is, is amazing. But as long as you're able to balance it out with the necessity of making an income. And it's not just about making an income. That's, to me, now that I reflect upon it. It's glaringly obvious that it's a reflection on people's choices, people's commitments, people's dedication to taking care of the financial aspects of their life because it's just a necessity. And I've said before that I feel like there's definitely a part of my psyche that just outright rejects this as a, you know, as a, as a universal truth forever. You know, I, I want to live another way. And so I've become more self-indulgent and I've resisted a lot of the tenets that people usually um, build their lives around. That of work, that of earning a lot of money um, and the pressures of it and having a career and all that stuff. It, it's never appealed to me. I've always pushed against it. And so I come in a circle I just keep looping 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 and the things that I observe now are that I am being quite immature it's part of maturity to choose to make a mature choice here are some examples in day to day life I have ample time. I need to be in some kind of routine. 
a routine to handle the aspect of my body, to make sure that I'm not slouching, to be aware, to prop myself up and mind my posture and um, stretch and move all the different parts of my body, make sure that my neck isn't straining too much and my shoulders and maintain a good balanced diet, exercise, um, getting in touch with my body to just feel every part of it and check in and say, am I treating you well? Is everything okay? Do you have any discomforts? It really is that kind of like internal conversation. Now that I'm separating my different aspects, I'm able to form a relationship with these concepts in order for me to better have a conscious choice to treat them better, to treat myself better. So I can look at my body like that. And I can look at my ego as well and say, hey, ego, do you have everything that you need? Are your needs being taken care of? And if ego, for example, says, no, I'm not happy with my levels of progression. I want to feel good about myself. I want to take pride in what I'm doing with my time and be proud of myself for my accomplishments and my self. I just want to feel good about myself. Um... Maybe other people do have people in their lives who are constantly communicating that they make them proud and that they're doing a good job. You might get that from a colleague at work or a boss from work. You might be able to derive that from yourself to have the self-awareness to go, oh, you know what, I'm going to pat myself on the back. That thing there was pretty awesome and... I'm happy about myself. And that's all part of the ego's dialogue within. It's this background communication that we have. They're not just all thoughts as a manner. So then I could have a, a conversation with other aspects of myself, as I've mentioned and formulate relationship with them and check in with them. And as I do that, I'm checking in with my ego and my discontented disposition. And I question myself, am I happy? Am I proud? Am I confident? Am I satisfied? No, is the answer to all of those. No. So ego has discontentment, unhappiness, um, not feeling confident. And it's, it's discouraging. So hopefully they cut out some of the wind. Yeah, I have discontentment. And I think it comes down to choices. If I was to try and take action in the little ways every day and make decisions for myself to not to be so self-indulgent, to instill and practice discipline. Self-discipline isn't a thing to achieve, it's a process to become. I think people generally need to always remember that it's always down to the process and the reason why you do anything whether you are just trying to identify what is or you move beyond and you go, well, 
we still live in uh, a world where we have to have a future, we have to reflect on our past and we have to project and we have to plan and we have to, have to, have to. And in that, that pressured world of time, we can plan and we can strategize and we can make things manifest and it comes down to having to leverage choice as well you have to make those sacrifices you have to make those tough choices to say today I am going to do really good things really mature things things that I've been resisting and putting off and people learn to do that very effectively and it helps to just get out the house and go to your office, do some un uncomfortable things that you don't really want to do, but it's just a habit now, and you've gotten used to it, and so it's much easier. And because you're out, you might as well do the groceries, you might as well do those chores, you might as well you know, catch up with those friends, and you might as well start ticking things off your list. And then it just becomes easier, I guess. And you get into the habit, you get into the role of it. And I guess routine is definitely something that's recommended throughout in, in, in a situation like myself where I have ample time and I'm, I've been entering quite a downward spiral in my life and keeping it private because it's shameful. And I don't feel like a man, I don't feel mature, I don't feel grown up, I feel stuck. And it's bringing everything down. It's not, it's not so, so far down. I'm not so far gone. But it is shameful to admit some things like this. And so my ego suffers. And that's where it is. I think, I think I have quite the attachment to my ego because ego's not happy. It's been neglected. And as much as ego wants to be self-indulgent, because ego is quite immature, there is this aspect of, well, ego is not just immature or mature. It, it's ego's... Ego's kind of fullness in itself. We are the ones who create these characters. And if we can envision ourselves living as some kind of character like a like a child um, then we can also visualize ourselves as a mature and responsible accountable proud and successful productive individual as many adults are but fewer of them unfortunately we don't have really good role models these days. We don't. And it's so sad. And that doesn't mean that we can't be a role model to ourselves. It's just so much more of a difficult <laughs> struggle when you don't have the points of reference. But we can look to stories and we can look to texts and we can look to conversations. And we can look at little things that people do who are around us people within our families or our social circles, work, wherever, if, they, if there are individuals who possess something that you admire, a quality that you admire, then look at how they make choices. Observe them and if you identify qualities that they have, actions that they take, um, then it's possible to start formulating a character based on all of the traits that you see, the best parts that make up this character, this mature role model. And you can give that person a gender, you can give that person an age, you can give that person an identity, and you can make that part... Um, 
of your psyche come to life and you can make that part of you that role model that guardian that father that mother that tutor that sensei you can have them start having a conversation with you and they're the ones who always know this is the right decision to make it's much more plain for them to see but if you're trapped in this little character that you call yourself the story that you tell yourself the experiences that you keep feeling if they are in a loop and you want to you want to find someone to help pull you out of this this little sinkhole this little pit then you can manifest them in your mind in your psyche and you can start formulating a conversation a relationship with that part of you that future you that wants to come alive and uh, I might start doing this myself as the thoughts come to me as the sun keeps shining on my face (sighs) these voice notes I hope they do help much more than I imagine they are now action is everything I know that I repeat patterns of being way too much in my mind overthinking, over analysing, over talking (laughs) there's no one to stop me but action speaks louder than words So now I need to start formulating a plan, but just, more importantly, act. Make the decisions that are more in line with the mature part of myself that I want to become. I want to become, you know, Mark 2.0. So it comes down to making the choices every single day. Every single thought that comes to my mind, I look at it and I go, is this what future Mark wants? Mark 2.0? Mark 2? <laughs> is this what Mark 2 wants? <laughs> I like that my name has... I mean, I've thought about that as well. Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, Mark S. I like this. I'm going to start referring to my Mark II and making decisions based on making Mark II a reality. Bringing him to life. Let's whip myself into shape and become Mark II.